Hi, uh, this is Jack Stanley, and uh, my beard has been growing quite a bit. I haven't shaved much, you know, because I had my work done on my knee, and I'm probably the last thing I'm really going to deal with is shaving, so I'm starting to look like a Quaker <laughs> or, or Pennsylvania Dutch at the moment, it looks that way. But I wanted to talk about events of a long, long time ago when I was a little boy. And that was our television, the families. Um, my grandparents bought it. That was the TV. We all watched the same TV. It's interesting. I, I was thinking about some memories when I was a really little kid. We had a television, and it was an RCA Victor. And it was a monstrous case that came in. It had doors in the front. And when you opened the doors, there you saw the Holy of Holies, the television screen. It was this, you know, it was 19 inches, it was black and white. And of course, if you wanted to watch a show or a program, the most important thing to do was to turn the television on about 15 minutes before the program you wanted to see. There are several reasons for that. First thing, you would open up the doors, and then you would turn the television on. And then you would wait, because the tubes had to heat up. And not only the tubes, but the television tube itself took a while to warm up. And then you'd start to hear the sound, and then you would see kind of faint images on the TV screen. And it, sometimes it would just start as a little dot in the middle. Sometimes it would grow. Sometimes it would come pretty much on. But at that point, it had to kind of warm up so the picture became something much more visible. But not only that. At that point, you had to adjust your antenna. Watching television was a very, very, very detailed operation years ago. You know, today it's so easy. You hit a control button. I was the control button when I was a kid. We're going to change the channel. Get up and change it. And I would run over and change the channel. But the thing is, after you turned on the television and everything finally had warmed up where you could see the picture. Then you would adjust your contrast, uh, your vertical, your horizontal, and you had to kind of hone in to the channel. Uh, there's nothing really like this today. Uh, it's like almost like in a radio station. You ever notice like you listen with a radio? Much more evident on uh, AM than on FM, but on AM you, you kind of get these shadow sounds and stuff like that, and it takes a while to finally hone in onto the station. That's how it was with television. And then you'd set up your horizontal, you get your vertical, your contrast, and then you would adjust the antenna. Sometimes you would do the antenna first because you didn't have any picture at all. Um, so you would sit there and move everything around with the what we call the rabbit ears that would be on the top of the television set. The interesting thing is this, that a lot of times the best reception you had was when you were holding the rabbit ears because you became the antenna. We used to hang all kinds of things from the antenna. You know, we had clothes hangers and pieces of wire and, uh, you know, tin foil and <laughs> all kinds of stuff. Everybody had their own little remedies, as it were. And then finally you had your picture, and occasionally it would kind of fade in and out, and you'd have to turn your, 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 your tuning dial sometimes to watch the program. And then you could see the show. Now, of course... If you wanted to watch something on another network, as they used to call it in those days, you had to change to that channel, to that network, and then you had to readjust to that 
network, that channel, and get everything set. And, of course, you had to change the antenna because the signal was coming from a different area. It was quite an interesting task to watch television years ago. It's an interesting thing because we, we don't think about it. But also the other thing that's very interesting that I find fascinating about it is this. You know, starting in the 1920s, going into the 30s, you had radio. And then radio meant that everybody would gather in the living room and sit around the radio, and it was theater of the mind. And then when television came in, it was the same sort of thing. And even if you think about it, this television set had the doors in the front, just like a radio would, or a Victrola would. You know, if you think about it, it was an RCA Victor uh, device. And what was fascinating was that the whole family, and it was everywhere, everybody did this, the whole family would gather and then they would watch the television together. You know, you'd watch the, the Ed Sullivan show or the Jack Benny show or, or a lot of times, I remember many times watching John F. Kennedy. President Kennedy would do his, his news conferences, his press conferences and speeches. And I, I was watching him and watching with my family from the time of the Cuban Missile Crisis onward. And he became quite a feature in our house because my parents were both big, big fans of President Kennedy, and I was too. And so whenever he had anything on television, we were watching it. And my grandparents uh, seemed to fall right in line with that as well. Interesting when you think about it. I mean, it's not that long ago. To some people, you would sit there and say, my God, it's a million years ago. It's only, I'm talking 1962. It's almost 60 years ago. That's kind of amazing, actually, when I think about that. that you know, when you start having memories that are 50 years old, um, it's kind of shocking. But then when you start having memories that are 60 years old, and as you grow older, you know, you're going to have memories that are 70 years old. And, you know, right up the pike until you decide to say hasta la vista. Uh, but uh, I just wanted to talk about TV. In the golden age of television, and in many ways, it wasn't too golden. It was fascinating stuff. We didn't know what we were missing. I mean, if we could take a look in 1962 and take a look at 2021, first off, we wouldn't want to be here because we'd see the whole thing with the pandemic. But then you'd see the wonder of, you know, you know all this uh, color television, which color existed, but it was very rarely around. Uh, it was just very expensive. But also the fact is you just had a couple of channels and each channel took a little bit of work to kind of tune into and you would watch your show and it was a very very limited program and remember when it got late everybody shut everything off and all you would hear was the Star Spangled Banner and then you would turn no matter what channel it was at you'd hear doop and you'd hear the, the tone until 6 a.m. or whatever it may be when they started broadcasting again a different age, a different time. But it was a very fascinating one, and I'm very glad I was around to see it and very, very happy to share it with you.